Hello there, fellow aspiring developers. We are in an era of nanotechnology. Technology is getting smarter, smaller, and sleeker. Remember those one-ton computers and the revolutionary inventions to simpler and more efficient ones? Things like laptops, iPods, iPads, smartphones, and now the revolutionary Apple Watch? Indeed, an evolution made revolutionary. And this is all at your fingertips. Every time we use these amazing gadgets, we have ideas to implement and show the world. And as an Apple Watch developer, we have the tools to reach the world. So now, this is all made easy and accessible through this Apple Watch development course by Simply Learn. I, Jason Ripka, will be your guide throughout the course. I'll share my knowledge and experience of over seven years with you so that you can be the best in the world. Hello, and welcome to How to Build Apps for the Apple Watch by Simply Learn. This is Lesson Zero, and it serves basically as an introduction to the course. In this lesson, we're going to learn a few things. First, we're going to learn how to understand the four main learning areas of the course. We're going to understand how the course is formatted for optimal learning. We're going to understand why Apple Watch development is important. And we're going to get to know the requirements for taking the course. So let's take a look at those first four main learning areas. The first area is learning Xcode. Now, Xcode is the IDE, or the Interactive Development Environment, that powers the design and code for Mac, iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch apps. And we're going to be using Xcode extensively in this course. Next, is the Swift programming language. We're going to need to have a solid grasp of the Swift programming language right from the start because that's going to be critical for us to build Apple Watch apps. And we're going to learn that step by step. Next, we're going to learn Watch OS 2 and WatchKit. Now, Watch OS 2 is the operating system that powers the watch, and WatchKit is the framework that we use to interact with the watch. So, a strong knowledge of these concepts is critical. Then we also need to learn the iOS 9 iPhone operating system. iOS 9 powers all of Apple's mobile devices from iPhones to iPads and we'll need to understand this syntax so we can develop apps that run on both the iPhone and the watch. So let's switch gears back to why Apple Watch programming is important right now. New technology is constantly changing the way we live our lives whether it's a new microwave oven or new wearable technology like the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch is not going anywhere. In fact, Apple is pouring millions into Apple Watch development behind the scenes to make things easier for developers. And the Apple Watch is the first wearable technology that does more than monitor health. In fact, it does so much more, as you'll see as we go throughout the course. And it's the wave of the future. So if we jump on board now, we'll have a head start. Now I'd like to focus your attention on the way the lessons in this course actually break down. The course is divided into several sections. And basically, section one or lesson one is an overview of building apps for the Apple Watch. So I'll be giving you a quick overview of how things actually pull together and everything ties together. In section two, we're going to go in depth and learn the Swift 2.0 syntax and the Swift programming language. In section three, we're going to look at the app user interface and the element basics. Then we're going to move on to using maps in your apps and application programming interfaces. And we're going to look at adding images and animations and more specific watch stuff like glances, notifications, and menus. And then we have a whole other section that just deals with apps. So let's get to that. So the first seven sections are packed with information and knowledge and examples and how to do things. But when we get to lesson eight, and in fact, eight through 17, we're going to be building apps, hands-on building apps that are, are real-world type apps. Like we have a what-if app, which is really just an introductory app. But then we have a watch calculator app, a speed reader app, a lucky numbers app, a camper's watch, an XML newsreader app, a daily quote, 
Memory Master app, a Random Cuteness app, and a Weather app. I mean, we're going all out here, and you're going to love building this stuff. Trust me. So let's move on to what the requirements are for taking the course. The requirements for taking this course could not be simpler. I mean, we call this Simply Learn for a reason. First, you'll need a Mac computer with the latest version of OS X. You'll need an active internet connection. And you'll need the latest version of Xcode installed. And Xcode is just an application that you download from the App Store. It's in the developer area. But if you just type Xcode and search for it, it'll be your first hit. Install that and you are ready to go with the rest of the course. Welcome to How to Build Apps for the Apple Watch, Lesson 1. This is an overview of building apps for the Apple Watch. The lesson objectives are how to install Xcode from the App Store, to view a brief overview of how to build the most basic app for the Apple Watch, and then, do you know Swift? And what you may be able to skip, which I don't really recommend, and what you should definitely watch out for. In this video, we're going to look at how to install Xcode from the App Store. And alternatively, if Xcode 7 is not available in the App Store, then we're going to do it from the developer website. So let's get started. So I have my App Store application running, and I'm here at the main screen. And what we need to do is just go into this search box up in the top right and just type in Xcode. And it auto pops up and just click that first one. And you'll see it here on the left hand side, just click that Xcode. And for me it says open, but for you it may say download. Now note the version number. This is version 6.4. And we're going to be working with version 7 or above. So if your version in the App Store is not version 7, then you need to get version 7 from the developer website. And we're going to take a look at that next. So perhaps the App Store in your region doesn't have Xcode 7 yet. Then we need to download it from the developer website. So go to uh, developer.apple.com slash Xcode slash downloads and you'll see here that you're able to download Xcode for free. Now there's two versions that you could download 6.4 which is available in the Mac App Store right currently and Xcode 7 beta 6 which is the current release at the time of recording. So Xcode 7 really should be in the App Store by the time you're viewing this and you shouldn't have to worry about this. But in the case that it's not, then just come to developer.apple.com slash Xcode slash downloads and go ahead and download Xcode 7 beta 6 currently, but whatever beta version there happens to be. Now you will need to log in with your developer ID in order to do this. So as you see, I have to log in. I'm just going to hit sign in. And it's going to go ahead and just start that download for me, okay? And the same thing for you. Just go ahead and sign in and download your version of Xcode. And you are good to go. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Apple Watch app creation process. Now, don't get too hung up on any of the details that I'm showing you because we're going to go through everything in depth as the course progresses. But I just wanted to show you by opening Xcode and creating a project very quickly just how simple it really is to make an application. But we need to first learn the core foundations like Swift. We need to learn about the app UI and GUI and the Xcode interface. So real quick, just going to show you. Uh, I'm going to go through it and explain it a little bit as I'm going, but for the most part, this is just for reference so you know what we're looking forward to doing and what we're going to be doing when, uh, when we're done with all the learning of Swift and learning of the technical details about the app itself, about apps, you know, for the watch and, you know, how we actually interact with them. Okay? 
So when you open Xcode, you're greeted by this welcome screen, and it says welcome, and it says the version of Xcode that you're using. In this case, I'm on 7 beta 6, and it gives you three options here. One, you can get started with a playground, which we're going to use when we actually learn Swift. We're going to use those pretty heavily. And then you could create a new Xcode project, which is what we're going to do right now, or you could check out an existing project from a repository, or there will be applications listed here that you've worked on previously, or you could open another project entirely by clicking this button here. So for right now, we're just going to click create a new Xcode project. And as you see on the left hand side, you can do an iOS application, you could do watch OS X applications, you could do OS X applications for the Mac, or you could do other, which are, you know, in-app purchases and other, other things, command line and whatnot. So we're going to do a watch OS application, and that's going to be an iOS app with WatchKit app, and we're just going to click next. And I'm just going to call this demo app. And for right now, I'm not even going to get into detail about what all this stuff means. All that I'm going to say is that, um, you know, basically what you put in here becomes your bundle identifier, which is very useful for you when you go to upload to the app store. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next and I'm going to go ahead and save this on my desktop here. And when it opens up, you have lots of things to look at and it can be a bit overwhelming and we're going to go through Xcode in depth. So don't worry about everything that we're looking at here, but basically this demo app folder here has to do with the iOS application or the application for the iPhone. And if you look here where it says demo app, watch kit app, this is the app for the watch. Okay. So here you have your interface storyboard and we're going to take a look at that right now. And this will go ahead and give us what we need to go ahead and get started. So as you see what it comes up with, initially, and I'm just going to get rid of this left side here, what it comes up with initially is an interface controller, which is basically a watch, you know, and that's where you put in your graphical user interface elements, and then it has a static interface and a dynamic interface, and we're going to get to those later in the course as well. But all I'm really going to do here is I'm going to put a label in here, and I'm just going to drag this to the right here so it takes up the whole screen here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this assistant editor button and this will actually bring up the WK interface class file that's associated with this view so to speak so this is a view and if I click this view controller here you can see that it's connected to this WatchKit foundation interface controller so I'm going to close this right side down and I want to show you how easy this is. If we just take label and we press control and drag this in right here above this override declaration, I'm just going to call this label so that we can refer to it and modify it. Okay. So now we have this element called label in here and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag this over so we can see the code a little bit better. And in this override, awake with context mode. This is what runs when the app is initially launched. What I'm going to do here is, as you can see, it says label there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that label. So I'm going to say label dot set text, and I'm going to set the text to a string, and it's going to say label has changed. And literally, that's all I'm going to do. Now what I'm going to do is on this area here, this is where you set the scheme for what to run. So if we click here and we look at the one that looks like a watch and it says demo app, watch kit app, and we want to select one of these two. So I'm going to select the six plus an Apple watch 38 millimeter. And I'm going to go ahead and click run. Now, when that runs, it should say that the label has changed. So as you see, when that comes up, it does in fact say label has changed. So 
I did change the label based on what I put here in the code. Now, one thing to note is that we are running two simulators. This is the watch simulator, and we have the iPhone simulator that's also running, but since we didn't program anything into the app for the watch, I mean, for the iPhone, nothing is running on the iPhone. So literally, that's all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you how we could go into Xcode and boom, make a change and have it go and appear that way. Now, obviously, I need to do something with the text formatting because it doesn't fit into that area. And uh, this app is kind of useless. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop here and um, we're going to move on because I literally just wanted to show you this just so you get an idea of the environment we're going to be working in which is going to be this Xcode environment with these I'm going to press stop here with these um, simulators and we're going to have all these things to wor work on so this interface storyboard was the view that we're looking at and this interface controller right here is the code view that's attached to it and you can see that it's attached to it if you look on the right hand side and you come over here to the third section where it says class interface controller and this is indeed the class called interface controller okay so don't worry about soaking all that up right now it'll all come very clear to you very soon okay so we're gonna stop here and we're gonna continue with the rest of the course Okay, so in this short video, I just want to touch on one thing, and that's Swift 2.0. Chances are you have a background, if you do have any background at all in Swift, you have a background in Swift 1.2, because Swift 2.0 has been uh, in the beta for quite some time now. But it's just almost out of beta. And if you have learned Swift 2.0 for the iPhone, just keep in mind that there are some subtle differences in the syntax for the iPhone and the watch or the iPhone versus the watch versus the Mac operating system so there are differences between all three of those also I want you to keep an eye out for optionals enumerations error handling and also NS user defaults for the watch because they are also different for the watch in regards to what you may have previously learned for the iPhone. So just real quick, that was really all I wanted to say. Just keep an eye out for those areas if you are uh, one of the students that do have a background in Swift already. All right.